Hello, welcome to today's Bible study, New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm uh, Pastor Randall Baker. Today we're going to do things just a little different uh, than we have been doing since this uh, this chapter, uh, Exodus 36, chapter 37, 38, and 39, all repeat almost exactly the same thing that Exodus 25, 26, 27, and some of 28 does. We will uh, we'll read all of those, uh, Exodus 36, 37, 38, and 39, and just do some highlights. And if you do have a particular question, you can message me on Facebook, or if you have my cell phone number, you can call me. Or you can, uh, you can go to my uh, YouTube page and watch the explanation on that particular chapter because we went a lot more in depth on them through uh, 25 through 27. But you can, like I said, go to my channel and view any of the previous videos. Uh, and, and you can go there by going to uh, either clicking on one of the videos uh, and then you can see the rest of them. Or you can go to Pastor uh, Randall, which is P A S T. O R A N D A L L, uh, just one R there. There's no, it's not Pastor and then Randall with an R, but just Pastor and Randall both with the same R. Uh, space Baker, B A K E R, all lowercase, 3857, no space between the Baker and the 3857. So it's Pastor, P A S T O R A N D A L L, space, that's all lowercase, Pastor Randall is. And uh, space, then lowercase, B-A-K-E-R, 3857, no space between Baker and 57. Uh, so, what, what, as I've explained, what we're going to do is we're going to read chapters 36, uh, and then we're going to talk about it a little bit, uh, not going in depth any, just talk about it a little bit, and then go on to 37, then go on to 38, and then go on to 39, but let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this uh, book of Exodus, Lord, and, and just thank you for what you've given us so far, and Lord, and just ask you to to go ahead and, and let us have some knowledge on it, expand our, our understanding of it, if it be your will, Lord. We only ask that all things be done according to your perfect will. We thank you for it. We ask you to bless our little church, all the members of it, Lord, all those people that come, their, their families as well, Lord. Bless them, keep them safe during this time, Heavenly Father, and bless their understanding as well of all things, and we thank you for it. We ask you to look over our older folks, those that are sick and in need, those that are uh, struggling in any way with any any type of illness Lord and we just ask that you would bless them and let us be uh, a blessing to them if it be your will and we'll thank you for it we ask you to look over us in all things and give you all the glory praise and honor in Jesus Christ and we do pray and amen now I just want to remind you as I usually do that we are still not taking up any collections at church as of yet so if you have a donation you'd like to make uh, either to the church, the building fund, the ladies club, missions of any kind, uh, just send it in to P.O. Box 151, Alexandria, Kentucky 41001 and mark it for what, what you'd like it to go to and we thank you for it. Let's go ahead and read chapter 36 and it said the then wrought Bezalel and Ahuliab, an every wise-hearted man, in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding to know how to work all manners of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Ahuliab, an every wise-hearted man, in whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come into the work to do it come unto the work and do it. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from this work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses made commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing. For the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. And every wise-hearted man among them that wrought the work of the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twine linen, and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work made he them. 
The length of one curtain was 20 and 8 cubits, and the breadth of one uh, curtain was four uh, one curtain, four cubits. The uh, curtains were all of one size. And he coupled the five curtains one unto another, and the other five curtains he coupled one unto another. And he made loops of blue on the edge of, of one curtain from the selve edge to the coupling. Likewise, he made in the uttermost side of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops made he in one cur curtain, and fifty loops made he in the edge of the curtain, which was in the coupling of the second. The loops held one curtain together. And he made fifty couches of gold, and coupled the curtains one unto another with the couches, so it became one tabernacle. And he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle, eleven curtains he made them. The, the length of one curtain was thirty cubits, and four cubits was the breadth of one curtain, eleven, the eleven curtains were of one size. And he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves, and he made fifty loops upon the uttermost edge of the curtain in the coupling, and fifty loops made he upon the edge of the curtain which coupled the second. And he made fifty couches of brass to couple the tent together, that it may be one. And he made a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red, and a covering of badger skins above that. And he made boards for the tabernacle of sheeting wood standing up. The length of a board was ten cubits, and the breadth of a board was one cubit and a half. One board had two tenons, equally distant one from another, Thus did he make for all the boards of the tabernacle, and he made boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards for the south side, southward. And forty soffits of silver he made under the twenty boards, two sockets under one board up for his two tenons, and two sockets under another board for his two tenons. And for the other side of the tabernacle, which is toward the north corner, he made twenty boards. And there forty sockets of silver two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board. And for the sides of the tabernacle westward he made six boards. Uh, and two boards made he for the corners of the, of the tabernacle in the two sides. And they were coupled beneath and coupled together at the head thereof to one ring. Thus he did to both of them in both the corners. And there were eight boards and other sockets were sixteen sockets of silver under every board two sockets. And he made bars of sheet and wood, five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the tabernacle for the side sides westward. And he made the middle bar to shoot through the boards from the one end to the other. And he overlaid the boards with gold, and made their rings of gold to be places for, for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. And he made a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen, linen with cherubims made he of cunning work, made he it of cunning work. And he made thereunto four pillars of sheet and wood and overlaid them with gold. Their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four sockets of silver. And he made an hanging for the tabernacle door of blue and, and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen of needlework. And the five pillars of it were their hooks, and he overlaid their chapiters and their fillets with gold, but the five sockets were of brass. Now, as I said, this week we're going to do a little set differently. We're just going to get some highlights of this, and, uh, and we'll see that the last verse in the last chapter that we read tells you why this has all been repeated like that. And one through four uh, uh, tells us uh, that all the wise-hearted, as it said earlier, all the wise-hearted, the, which were the, the, the certainly uh, very well-skilled uh, workers, they made and they brought what was needed. And that was uh, on... Uh, chapters, I mean, uh, verses 1 through 4. Now in verses 5 through 7, it says that they brought so much, and that's because they were eager to bring the stuff, and they brought so much, and, and, they, and they were way more than they needed too much, so Moses had to tell them to stop bringing the stuff. That was in verses 5 through 7. Now verses 8 through 13 says that the curtains for the sanctuary was inside, which was inside the uh, outer court. There was an outer court around it, all around the outside of it, and there was an inner court inside that had uh, the holy place and the most holy place. So the curtains that they were made for the inner sanctuary there uh, uh, these were of fine uh, linen, fine twine linen curtains, and they were 28 cubits long and four 
cubits high. Uh, this section describes the loops and the touches also that kept the curtains uh, together, that would keep them all the way together. Uh, and and uh, 14 through 18 then describes the cover or the roof of the skins that went over the inner sanctuary. And some were a little bit longer than others to hang over. Uh, and that was probably to keep the, the rain and maybe the wind or anything out of there. And so verses 19 through 30, 30, these verses go on to explain the construction and the covering for the inner tent. Uh, it, it had the, it had, uh, the uh, two more coverings of lamb skin over the top of it and uh, one of ram skin rather and one of badger skin and that was, those were probably tanned into waterproof leather type materials. And also it gives the board sizes and how they were supported by a stand of silver which they were stood up in for each board and the each board had tenons and sockets which were like tabs and grooves that they each one fit in together and that was to hold them up. Now 31 through 34 uh, describes the bars which went uh, horizontally which went this way across uh, to support those boards together and to keep them up and aligned with each other. And then verse 35, the last verse says uh, that the veil, and it's talk, or not the last verse, sorry, but it talks about the veil. And uh, that veil is the veil, is, is, it's not the exact same one, but it is the exact same place of the veil that's described in Matthew as one that was being rent in two uh, from the bottom to the top, or rather from the top to the bottom when Jesus Christ uh, cru was crucified and died on the cross. And, point that he died that uh, veil was ripped in, in two it was ripped it was rend rent or rend the bible says and that is to signify that we no longer had to go through a priest to get to god but rather that jesus christ was the only one that we needed to go through verses 36 through 38 talks about the four support pillars on each corner and the door of the inner tent and how that it was of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen, so it was a little fancier than the others. And, and the pillars, as we read, were overlaid uh, with gold. As everything in there, most of the things in, the, in there, uh, tools and everything, a lot of them were uh, sheet of wood that was then overlaid with gold. Now we're going to read uh, chapter 37. And 37 1 says, And Bezalel made the ark of sheet and wood, and two, uh, two cubits and a half was the length of it, and a cubit and a half was the breadth of it, and a cubit and a half the length of it. And he overlaid it with pure gold within and without, and made a crown of gold to it round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold to be set by the four corners of it, even two rings upon one side of it and two rings upon the other side of it. And he made staves of sheet and wood and overlaid them with gold. And he put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark to bear the ark. And he made the mercy seat of pure gold. Two cubits and a half was the length thereof and one cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And he made two cherubims of gold beaten out of one piece made he them on the two ends rather of the mercy seat. One cherub on the end of on this side and another cherub on the other end, on, the, on that side, out of the mercy seat made he the cherubims and the two ends, on the two ends thereof. And the cherubims spread out their wings on high and covered with their wings over the mercy seat and their faces one to another, with their faces one to another. Even to the mercy seat were, were the faces of the cherubims. And he made the table of sheet and wood, two cubits was the length thereof and a cubit the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold and made thereon, un, thereunto a crown of gold round about. Also, he made thereunto a border of it and hand breadth round about and made a, gold, made a crown of gold for the border thereof round about. And he cast for it four rings of gold and put the rings upon the four corners that were in the four feet thereof. Over against the border were the rings, the places for the staves to bear the table. And he made the staves of sheet of wood and overlaid them with gold to bear the table. And he made the vessels which were upon the table, his dishes and his spoons and his bowls and his covers to cover with all of pure gold. And he made the candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work made he the candlestick, his shaft and his branch, his, bow, his bowls, his knops and his flowers were of the same. 
and six branches going out of the sides thereof. Three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of one candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three bowls made, three bowls made after the fashion of almonds, in one branch, one a knop and a flower, and three bowls made, and three bowls made like almonds in another branch, a knop and a flower. So throughout the six branches going out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick were four bowls made like almonds, his knops and his flowers, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, and a knop under two branches of the same, according to the six branches going out of it. Their knops and their branches were of the same. All of it was of one beat. All of it was uh, was one beaten work of pure gold. And he made his seven lamps and his snuffers and his snuff dishes of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold made he it and all the vessels thereof. And he made the incense altar of Shedom wood. The length of it was a cubit and the breadth of it a cubit. It was four square and two cubits were the height of it. The horns thereof were of the same. And he overlaid it with pure gold, both the top of it and the sides thereof round about, and the horns of it. And he made unto it a crown of gold round about. And he made two rings of gold for it under the crown thereof, by the two corners of it upon the two sides thereof, to be places for the staves to bear it withal. And he made the staves of Shedom wood, and overlaid them with gold. And he made the holy anointing oil, and the pure incense of sweet spices, according to the work of the apothecary. So one through five, we talk about the ark, uh, and it was two and a half uh, cubits long, one cubit and a half wide, and one cubit and a half tall. It was made of Shedom wood, and then overlaid with gold, with a crown or trim uh, of pure gold all, all around the top of it, with rings and rods uh, to carry it with. And then 6 through 9 talks about the mercy seat, which was the lid for the Ark of the Testimony. It had two cherubims. Uh, it was a sheet of wood uh, covered with, uh, with pure gold. And, and it had two cherubims facing one another on the top with their wings spread out over the whole uh, mercy seat. Verses 10 through 16 then talks about the table and the dishes for it, all of sheet of wood and, or of pure gold. And, and that was to hold the, the showbread, the 12 loaves of showbread, which, which certainly represented the 12 tribes of Israel, but it also represented Jesus Christ being the bread of life. Verses 17 through 24 talks about the candlestick, which is of pure gold, and it had seven lamps. It only mentions the six here, but before it talked about the seven lamps and bowls, uh, bowls for the oil. Now it had three uh, on each side, uh, uh, three uh, branches and each one of them had a bowl but the middle also was a bowl which made up the seven and the seven uh, uh, oil of course that they held uh, was representation of the Holy Spirit and the seven lamps were the seven spirits of God the light also of course represents that Jesus Christ as God is the light of the world now it had an almond design. It had an almond design. The bowls looked like almonds. <clears throat> and almond, it looked like almond tree. The, the whole thing looked like an almond tree, and that was to represent eternal life because the almond tree uh, was used quite a lot of times to represent extended or uh, eternal life. And the last verses, this is kind of a shorter chapter, and the last verses uh, was 25 through 29, which talked about the altar of incense, which was made of seed and wood and overlaid with pure gold as the others. And then it talked about the holy incense and the holy anointing oil, which was, which was of the sweet herbs and the spices. Uh, and that was a, a certain mix that had to be mixed by the apothecary, and it uh, was for a sweet smell to God. And they were to be mixed exactly as God had said they were to be mixed and used. And they were only to be used for that purpose. Nobody could make any perfume or any other oil for themselves or anything else out of that. Those were only to be used as the incense and then the uh, uh, oil. Verse, verse, uh, or ch rather, chapter 38, beginning in verse 1, says, And he made the altar... Uh, of burnt offering of sheet and wood, five cubits was the length thereof, and five cubits the breadth thereof. It was four square, and three cubits the height thereof. And he made the horns thereon, <clears throat> on the four corners of it. The horns thereof were of the same, and he overlaid it with brass. And he, he made and he made all the vessels, and the altar of the pots, and the shovels, and the basins, and the flesh hooks, and the fire pans, all the vessels thereof made he of brass. And he made for the altar a brazen grate of network under the coppice thereof beneath 
unto the midst of it. And he cast four rings for the four ends of the grate of brass to be places for the staves. And he made the staves of sheet and wood and overlaid them with brass. And he put the staves into the rings on the sides of the altar to bear it withal. He made the altar a hollow with boards. And he made the laver of brass and the foot of it brass of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he made the court on the south side so southward, the hangings of the court were of fine twine linen and hundred cubits. These uh, pillars were twenty, and their brazen sockets twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the north side, the hangings for an hundred cubits were an hundred cubits. Their pillars were twenty, and their sockets of brass twenty. The hooks of the pillars and their sockets of uh, fillets rather of silver. And for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits their pillars ten and their sockets ten, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver. And for the east side eastward, fifty cubits. The hangings of the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. And for the other side of the court gate, on this side and on, that, on this hand and on that hand, were hangings of fifteen cubits, their pillars three and their sockets three. All the hangings of the court round about were of fine twine linen. And the sockets for the pillars were of brass, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets of silver, and the overlaying of their chapiters of silver. And all the pillars of the court were filleted with silver. And the hangings for the gate of the court was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. And twenty pillar, uh, twenty cubits rather was the length and the height, in the breadth, height and the breadth, or rather, let me try that one more time, and the height in the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the court, and their pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their hooks of silver and the overlaying of their chapiters, and their fillets of silver, and all the pins of the tabernacle and other court round about were of brass. This is the sum of the tabernacle given of the tabernacle of testimony as it was counted according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar son of Aaron the priest and Bezalel son of Uri the son of Hur. Of the tribe of Judah made all that the Lord commanded Moses and with him was a holy ab son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver, and a cunning workman, and an embroiderer in blue, and in purple, and in scarlet, and fine linen, and all the gold that was occupied for the work, and all the work of the holy place, even the gold of the offering, was twenty and nine talents, and seven hundred and thirty shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver of them that was numbered of the congregation was an hundred talents, and three thousand seven hundred and three score and fifteen shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. A becca for every man, that is half a shekel, after the shekel of the sanctuary, for every one that went to be numbered from twenty years old and upward, for six thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty men. And of the hundred talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil and hundred sockets of the hundred and hundred sockets of the hundred talents a talent for a socket and of the thousand seven hundred seventy and five shekels he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their chapiters and filleted them and the brass of the offering was seventy talents and two thousand and four hundred shekels and therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the brazen altar and the brazen grate for it and all the vessels of the altar and the sockets of the court round about and the sockets of the court gate and all the pens of the tabernacle and all the pens of the court round about. So 1 through 7 talked about the altar uh, for the burnt offering, which was made of sheet and wood, as the others were, and covered with gold, or brass rather, and the horns on each corner were overlaid with brass as well. And all the vessels, all the tools, and everything in the altar 
uh, was made of brass. Uh, this is different because the other stuff had been made of gold and, and or plated with gold, but this was all of brass. And brass, uh, a lot of times it'll symbolize God's judgment, like things that are burned in the furnace uh, of the uh, of brazen or brass. Now this was essentially a big oven, that's what this was, uh, and it had a grate and an ash bin and everything under it. It was to offer the burnt offerings on. Now in verse 8, verse 8, the brass laver was there, which was actually, uh, you know, a sink of a type of thing or a bowl or something like that for, the, for them to wash the priests in. And, and uh, they were to wash all over the, when it was sanctified, but then after that they were just to wash their hands and feet. Now it was made, or the foot of it at least, was made from highly polished brass that the women uh, had used for their mirrors or their looking glasses. The verses 9 through 20 uh, it gives the construction and the materials used to build the outer court, which is around the outside of the inner court in the sanctuary. It was, uh, <clears throat> I think it was 100 cubits long. I got 50 here, but I think it was 100 cubits long and 50 wide. And it was covered in a uh, fine twine linen. The gate was a lot fancier than the rest of it because it was needlework of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen. linen. Verses 21 through 31 uh, tells how much silver and gold and actually gets into the brass that was used uh, uh, and how much it had been given or received for the workings of the tabernacle. For the sockets, talks about the sockets and the tenning, tenons and the, and the plating and the altars and the tools. Now they were 29 talents uh, and 730 shekels of gold collected and they were 100 talents and 1,775 shekels of silver to build the, uh, the, uh, uh, the tabernacle or the temple. And uh, it actually boiled down to a half a shekel, what I called in a becca, uh, for every male 20 and over <clears throat> that was donated. And the brass it mentioned uh, was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. And they made some of the, of the sockets out of that as well. And uh, uh, some of the, of the cord, uh, of the sockets and the cord and stuff around that uh, to hold the boards up and to hold the different things. Uh, and let's see, let's go on to the last chapter, uh, which is chapter 39, which is a much longer chapter, but we'll try to go through it fairly quickly. Uh, Chapter 39, verse 1 says, And of the blue and purple and scarlet they made cloths of service to do service in the holy place, and made the holy garments for Aaron, as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the ephod of gold, blue and purple and scarlet, and fine twine linen. And they did beat the gold into thin plates and cut it into wires to work it into the blue and in, and in the purple and in the scarlet and in the fine linen with cunning work. They made shoulder pieces for it to couple it together by the two edges was it coupled together. And the curious girdle of his ephod that was upon it was of the same according to the work thereof of gold, blue, of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen as the Lord commanded Moses. And they wrought onyx stones enclosed in ouches of gold, graven as signets uh, are, in, are gravers, are graven with the names of the children of Israel. And he put them on the shoulders of the ephod that they should be stones for memorial to the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. And he made the breastplate of cunning work like the work of the ephod of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen. It was four square. They made the breast double, the breastplate double. A span was the length thereof, and a span the breadth thereof being double. And they set it in four rows of stones. The first row was a sardis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. That was the first row. And the second row, an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the th third row, a ligure, an agate, and an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, an onyx, and a jasper. They were enclosed in ouches of gold in their enclosings. And the stones were according to the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names. Like the engravings of a signet, every one with his name, according to the twelve tribes. And they, may, and they made upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. And they made two ouches of gold and two gold rings, and put the two rings in the two ends of the breastplate. And they put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. And the two, ring, two ends of the two wreathed chains they fastened 
in the two ouches and put them in the sh on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And they made two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate upon the border of it, which was on the side of the ephod inward. And they made two other gold rings and put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath toward the fore part of it over against the other coupling thereof above the curious girdle of the ephod and they did bind the breastplate by his rings unto the to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it might be above the curious girdle of the ephod and that the breastplate might be loosed from the ephod as the Lord commanded Moses and he made the robe of the ephod of woven work all of blue and there was a hole in the midst of the robe as a hole in haber of an habergeon with the band round about the hole round, uh, round about the hole that it should not rend and they made upon the hems of the robe pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet and twined linen and they made bells of pure gold and put the bells between the pomegranates upon the hem of the of the robe round about between the pomegranates and a bell a bell and a pomegranate a bell and a pomegranate round about the hem of the robe to minister in as the lord commanded moses and they made coats of fine linen of woven work for aaron and for his sons and a mitre of fine linen and goodly bonnets of fine linen and linen breeches of fine twine linen and a girdle of fine twine linen and and blue and purple and scarlet of needlework as the Lord commanded Moses and they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a writing like to the engraving of engravings of a signet holiness to the Lord and they tied un, unto it a lace of blue to fasten it high upon the mitre as the Lord commanded Moses this was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished thus rather was all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation finished and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses so did they and they brought the tabernacle unto Moses the tent and all the furniture his touches his boards his bars and his pillars and his sockets and the coverings of ram skins dyed red and the covering of, of badger skins and the veil of the covering the ark of the testimony and the staves thereof and the mercy seat the table and all the vessels thereof and the showbread the pure candlestick with the lamps thereof even with the lamps to be set in in order and all the vessels thereof and the oil for light and the golden altar and the anointing oil and the sweet incense and the hanging for the tabernacle door the brazen altar and his grate of brass, his staves, and all his vessels, the labor and his foot, the hangings of the court, his pillars, and his sockets, and the hangings for the court gate, his cores and his pens, and all the vessels of the service of the tabernacle for the tent of the congregation, the claws of service to do service in the holy place, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest and his son's garments to minister in the priest's office, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel made all the work. And Moses did look upon all the work, and behold, they had done it as the Lord had commanded. Even so had they done it, and Moses blessed them. So in verse 1, it talks about the blue and the purple and the scarlet cloth that was collected to be used for the service in the holy place and to make Aaron and the priests uh, cloths. In verses 2 through 4, they made the ephod. The ephod was the apron that Aaron wore, wore uh, that kind of supported the other parts uh, of his garments. It contained uh, almost uh, the same materials that were used to build the tabernacle the blue and the purple and the gold and the, and the fine fine linen and all that and it had shoulder straps on each side to hold it up to hold that uh, up the ephod up now the uh, the girdle or the belt uh, was was they call it the curious girdle uh, of the ephod but it was only curious because the workmanship and design were so intricate, so they, they were so good on it that it, it made, uh, and it was made also of the same materials as the ephod. 
Now in, in uh, verses 8 through 21, it talks about the breastplate. And the breastplate was a piece of, of cloth that went down uh, on the breastplate. It was folded back up. It went down and it was folded back up to, to form a square. And it had a pouch. It would make a pouch in it that, that, that uh, things were slid into. And it was attached at the top of the, of the shoulder straps with two gold rings and, and gold chains. Uh, and at the bottom also with those gold rings and gold chains. And it contained, as we read earlier, the 12 precious stones to set in gold for each one of the 12 tribes of, of Israel. And each one of those stones had a name of a tribe of Israel engraved in it. Probably from the youngest to the oldest, maybe, or maybe from the most important to the least important. It doesn't really tell us that. And then verses 22 through 26 uh, says that under the ephod was the robe, and he wore a robe, and it was all of one wor of, of woven, woven work, it was all all uh, woven together and it was all of blue. The robe was longer of course uh, than the ephod and the other stuff was and, and it was hung down around the hem and around, down around the hem around the bottom of it was a repeating uh, pattern and that was a, that was a, uh, a, of a pomegranate and then it would have a golden bell then a pomegranate and a golden bell and the golden bells were actually working little bells that tinkled and made noise so when Aaron went into the holy place the Bible says so that he wouldn't be killed so God knew when he came in. Of course, God knew anyway, but that was still uh, told to be done like that. Now, verses 27 and 28 talks about those special coats that they had made. Uh, and I guess when that was when it was cold outside or whatever, they had these special coats that they would made, and those were of woven work. Uh, work, and they may have gone underneath the other stuff. They may have gone over it. it doesn't really tell us that. But that was for Aaron and his sons, uh, uh, both uh, all to be worn. And Aaron, though, had a special hat that was called a mitre, and his sons had hats that were called uh, bonnets. Verses 30 and 31 talks about Aaron's mitre, and how it had a gold, a gold plate that went across the front of it that was tied, tied together with a blue lace. Uh, and on that, on that golden plate, uh, uh, it, it had uh, the words, Holiness to the Lord on there. Uh, verses 32 through 41 uh, talks about the tabernacle and how it was finished then and everything was done. All the, all the walls, all the boards, everything, the altars, the ark, the tools and all the tables, the, the, the candlestick and, and the, uh, the incense and the oil, the anointing oil, all that was done. And verses 42 and 43 are very important verses, and that's the reason it lets you know in these two verses here why this all has been repeated again as it was, it was done through uh, some earlier uh, uh, verses or chapters, rather, in Exodus to, into some of the 20th chapters, and now again repeated almost exactly word for word throughout some of these. And that is to show that God had told Moses how that each item, right down to the very last detail, should be made. And then uh, and these chapters, uh, 36 through 39, show that they had done that. They had done it exactly the way had God had told them to do. And, and you know, the whole point of that is to show us that sometimes we want to do things our way. Uh, even though the Bible tells us what God expects of us, we sometimes do the things the way that we want them done or we, the way that we think they ought to be done or the way we just want to do them. Uh, in Proverbs 14, 12, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So I think that the moral of that is that we should uh, do it God's way, that we should do exactly what God tells us to do, exactly the way He tells us. Now, the Bible tells us very plainly that there's only one way to be saved, but when you look around at a lot of these other churches, a, a, a lot of other organizations, they try to give you different ways to be saved. And one of the, one of the worst things, I think, is that a lot of them tell you that it has to be done by works. When the Bible makes it plain in, in Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9, that it's not of works. It's not of anything that we can do. It's not of, by works of righteousness, Titus says, that we have done. So by His mercy we're saved. So I want to make, make sure that you all understand that that's what it is about. I thank you for your attention, and, and uh, we only actually have one more chapter then of Exodus left, and that'll be chapter 40. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead and read and study that and, and uh, have an idea of what's going on in it. And next week, we'll, uh, we'll, if God 
God willing, good Lord willing, we'll go over that and we'll and we'll try to do some explanation on it and and try to expound on it a bit. Again, thank you for uh, for your attention for for tuning in and uh, and we'll go ahead and end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for those that are watching. We thank you for your word, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this book of Exodus that we're almost finished with, Lord. We thank you for the truth that it contains. We thank you for the examples and examples that are in there. We thank you, Lord, uh, for Israel and, and the things that they went through to teach us not to do some of those things and to show us that God, you are a holy God and that, that you are a miraculous God. You're, you're able to do all things. You're a great God. Again, we would ask you to continue to bless and be with us. Give us that desire to learn more about you, to, to serve you, Lord, to, to study your word, Lord, as we're supposed to. And we thank you for it. We just ask you to bless all those that are sick and in need. Heal them, Lord. Uh, everyone that's sick with this virus, heal them. Those that have lost loved ones, Lord, for whatever reason, we just ask that you would bless and comfort them and we thank you for it and again we'll give you all the glory all the praise and all the honor in jesus christ's name we do pray and amen